Good afternoon, everyone. The other night I told some of the girls that I had made something that was too stinking cute. Well, this is nothing new. Uh, I we used to make these a very, very, very long time ago <laughs> when I was a child. And we would use old Christmas cards to make them. Now, I couldn't find my little pile of old Christmas cards because we don't get a lot of Christmas cards anymore. And uh, I knew I had some Christmas looking paper and I wanted to try it out. So, we are going to make one of these fun paper Christmas ornaments. Um, and we're going to use a few things. We, I have a piece of, um, it's not quite cardstock, it's not quite paper. Well, let's see if it tells me. It doesn't tell me. It's from one of these Recollections pads. They're the special buy at Michael's. Um, so the stock is not heavy cardstock, but it's not real paper weight either. And we're going to need a hole punch, and you can use whatever size hole punch you want. Of course, the smaller that you get, the more difficult this gets to make. Uh, we're going to use a piece of cardboard that, uh, this is just cereal box cardboard. We're going to need some tacky glue and probably some scissors. Uh, I also, it's disappeared, I have a little... I have a little spool of ribbon. I couldn't find any satin ribbon, so we're going to use this uh, silk ribbon that I've got. Um, you might need a needle. If you have a compass, <laughs> a compass would be very helpful, but I don't have a compass. I couldn't find one, so I'm going to show you how to do this without a compass. So I'm going to first going to tell you that we need 20 of these little circles. So we're going to cut out 20 circles. And I'm going to use the smaller one and make a smaller um, ball. I just happen to think they're a little bit cuter that way. And if you don't have a hole punch, just you're going to have to find a way to make a circle. So you may really need a compass. And then cut these out by hand. If they're not perfect, you won't see. It won't be that big a deal. It's not. Oh, that got caught. I am sure we had no hole punches back when we made these. Um, I don't ever remember even having anything besides a standard office hole punch. So, um... And I'm just making these, uh, I'm not going to worry about which way the stripe goes. I'm going to let the stripe in this cardstock go whichever way it wants to go. And I know that if you go all the way around, um, this is a one and three quarter inch punch. If you go all the way around, you get about 20 circles. I'm not even going to bother counting them right now. I can always cut another one if I need it. So we're going to set that aside. Now... I'm going to need a couple of circles out of some paper, just some plain white paper, something that's easy to fold. And this is about getting the little triangle that fits inside of our circle so that we know how to fold this. Okay, this is an equilateral triangle. And if you have a compass and go online, it will tell you how to get this little triangle with your compass. Now, I happen to already have um, figured this out, and I don't have a compass, so I'm going to show you how to do it without a compass. Um, and I'm going to do it twice so that it makes sense, and I'm going to do it the first time. Oh, there's my ribbon. It's underneath my paper. I'm going to do it on this big one so that you can see how I did it. This is a two and a half inch punch and I'm just, um, this is just so that it'll be easier for you to see. And I really dislike how this punch works. It works real well if you're punching something heavy, but it does not work well when you're punching paper. 
so we'll have to kind of adjust that a little. Yeah. Okay. What we have to have is we have to have this little triangle that fits in the center of our circle. Okay, and there's my ribbon. So to get that, I am going to fold this in half exactly. Okay? And then I'm going to open it back up. And so you can see it. I'm going to put a pencil mark on it. I didn't the other day because, you know, I can I can see the Well, I was going to put a pencil mark. Apparently my pencil doesn't want to write. Okay, there we go. So my circle is folded exactly in half. I'm going to take the other circle. I'm going to fold it in half. And then I'm going to fold it in half again so that it is now in quarters. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do, and I'm going to, let me draw on it so that you can see the fold line. There's my fold line. Okay. What I am going to do is, oh, you might need some uh, washi tape. It was easier when I taped it down. But I'm not taping it down, I'm taping the two pieces together. So we're going to put our washi tape sticky side up. Now you see this line where I have folded my circle in exactly in half, and then this line where I have a quarter fold. This is where it was folded as a quarter. Okay, so I'm going to open this up and I'm going to line up these two lines and you're going to want to use a ruler and make sure that you have the that fold line lined up exactly. And then stick it down to your washi tape real good. Okay. I mean, this is the hardest part, promise. Then I'm going to open this up. And you can't see it, but this is probably very well, but this is where my circle is now folded this way and my fold line is lined up with the center point touching the edge of the fold line. So see how they line up? Then I can mark it here and here. Something is on the tip of my pencil. I must have used it in glue or something. There we go. Okay, so now I have three marks. I have this one down here, this one here, and this one over here where my fold line is. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my ruler and draw lines to each one. I no longer need this stuff on here. I can get rid of it. And I will put this triangle right in the middle. you want to do this pretty carefully it's not you know remember this is a handmade ornament so so now I have my equilateral triangle that fits right in the center of my circle I'm going to do that one more time with this big circle okay because I know it is a little hard to see. And you know what I just decided? We will use, let's use a different color circle for the second one so that you can see it better. Okay, so on my first circle, I'm going to fold it in half.
and on that fold mark we do not you don't have to draw it you just have to be able to see it but I wanted you to be able to see it excuse me oh excuse me I'm so, I'm so sorry I apologize drastically Ooh. oh oh Okay, and I'm going to use my little piece of washi tape just to hold it open and the lined up. Now I'm going to fold my little piece of other circle in half, like so. And then, oh, I need to fold it the other way so you can see it. Just a second. I'm going to fold it in half, and then I'm going to fold it in quarters. Okay, now if you need to put your ruler on your other your open circles fold line and you're going to put the tip of the corner right here right against your other circle but right on the fold line. Okay, then you open it open it again and the fold line that goes all the way across should line up with this fold line and when it does you mark it here here and over here on the fold line and then you can draw your triangle I hope that makes sense guys if it doesn't make sure that you give me a holler And like I said, if you have a compass, there's all kinds of YouTube videos out there about putting an equilateral triangle into a circle. Okay, once we get that, and I'm going to go back to using the little one because I'm going to make a little ornament. We're going to cut this triangle out. And now you need one out of cardboard. Now, I found that if you cut two out of your cardboard, and my cardboard is not straight along this edge, so I'm going to actually cut a new one. Oh my, cutting big pieces is not a good idea. You can't turn it when you have such a gigantic piece of cardboard. Okay, so I'm going to cut two triangles out of this cardboard. And the reason for two is that it was easier to fold my little circles Okay, and we're going to have a second one. And you want to get them about the same size. Be careful to, this is important to get it as close as you can to an equilateral triangle. And then I glued the two, the two triangles together. Okay. Why are they sliding around? Don't ask me. Um, you can use whatever kind of glue you want. Uh, the tacky glue, of course, dries pretty quick. and you just What I'm doing is just making a double thick piece of cardboard. Now, if you happen to have something thicker, handy, that would work just fine. Okay? And you want to let this dry because you're going to move it around. So I'm going to use my already made one. Then I just take my little circles that I punched out. And I'm going to sit here and I'm going to fold up all of my little circles. Now, when you fold the two pieces in, it's best to pull your little triangle out. <laughs> Because my triangle kept getting caught in there. It's just easier. And fold it in. So now I have 
my circle folded into a triangle. And you're going to do that to all 20 of your triangles. Okay, now I'm going to um, turn the sound off so I can speed the video up in just a few minutes. Okay? Okay, so that takes a while. <laughs> you notice I didn't uh, worry about burnishing these down or anything. It really, it doesn't have to be that. The folds are important, but they do not have to be burnished or creased real terribly, terribly hard. So then we're going to get our tacky glue. And we are going to put little bit of glue on one side of this. Now I always do one side at a time so that I have it so I can adjust it if that makes sense. And you want to get the folds lined up like so and tacky glue gets sticky pretty quick and I just set them aside. Now I usually do a bunch and and let that that too sit for a minute just to let the tacky glue get a little harder just a drier not harder but drier 
I suppose you could do this with a glue stick, but um, I have never been a huge fan of glue stick. And like I said, I'm not worrying about the stripes. I just, I you could. You could pay attention to exactly how the stripes on your circle line up, I guess, and and pay attention to it. Now, on my plaid one, I did not, and uh, I think it turned out really cute without worrying about it. And I just do several of these two-piece um, ones. And I'm just going to put that right back there so you can see it. And they're not, they're not perfect. And they're, you know, like I said, this is nothing new. We, um, I, I cannot remember gluing them together. I, I remember, I remember them. I remember making them as a kid. I don't remember actually putting them together. So I, I don't know, maybe, you know, you could staple these together. That would work too. Um, okay, so once I get a bunch of twos put together like so, I go back and I put two twos together. And you don't want to go too far with the twos because you do need some singles. Okay. So we have that one. And you notice we made sort of a little C. Uh, let's turn it around so it looks like a C. They're kind of in a ring. We're going to actually put five together. Okay. So now we're going to pick up a single one. And we're going to put glue on two sides of it. And we're going to put it together right here and right here. Okay, come on now, behave yourself. And this one gets a little trickier. You want to uh, get one lined up. Yep, my tacky glue decided to get dry real fast. We're going to have to put a little more tacky glue on there. Um, it wasn't lined up, guys. It just, it had an attitude. There we go. Alright, and that makes kind of a little dome-shaped thing. You see how it's domed? And we're going to do that again. Alrighty. My fingers, I know, are in the way where you can't see, but there's no other way for me to really do it. There we go. Alright. Okay, now we're going to put a few more um, twos together, but don't put them all together. Uh, the center row, you have a little dome on the top, like so. Well, this is the top, but you have a little dome on the top and a little dome on the bottom, but the center row goes around in the middle. Let me see if I can hold it up there where you can kind of get an idea. It's 
So this, these are the two pieces we've made so far. Now we need to make this row that goes in the middle. Okay. So I do go ahead and glue a couple of twos together. It just makes it a little easier because they're drier. when you're working with them. Well, that one I sit it down and it kind of slid. Okay. And I just like to leave myself some wiggle room in case I've done something just a little off. So I don't do those last two. I, I want to leave them separate so that I can have the ability to make sure I get my triangles all lined up in the right line. So now what we need to do is we need to make a row of triangles that look like they're in a row. And you see here, if I did it that way, it's not it's going to turn into something else. I need to do it this way. So what I need to do is make sure that my triangles all end up in a sort of a straight row. All right. Now we can go ahead and put uh, these two together. And it really doesn't take a lot of glue. It's uh, you don't want to get too much glue because then it gets hard to work with. Now you got to look at this to make sure you get these in a straight row. You see here, it looks lines up and it looks nice and straight. And that's what you want it to look like when you start gluing together. So remember how you pick things up and which side. If if you pick it up so that you know which side you've got to put your glue on. Now, it would help if my tacky glue wasn't about to run out. Okay. And if you just keep it in line, keep your line lined up here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave that one and I'm going to pick up. No, I won't. I'm just going to do it this way. Um, when I made mine, I wasn't trying to show anybody, so I did work back and forth. But you want to make sure you get your straight line out of your triangles. heavens. Okay, and we're just going to put this together like so. Until we get all the way down to the last one. And we have sort of a nice straight line. Now because this is going to uh, get wiggled around a little bit. You want to give it a second or two before you pick it up. It, I mean, you just want to let your glue set just a little bit. But then you're going to pick it up and we're going to attach this end to this one. Okay? So what it's going to do is form a complete ring all the way around like so. So Like I said, I'm going to lay it back down. This one to this one. OK. 
Okay, now if you see, you have five little tabs on the top, and if you turn it over, you got five little tabs on the bottom, and our top and bottom each have five little tabs. Okay? So now what we're going to do is we're going to put glue on all five of one set of tabs. And we're going to pick up one of our little domed shape pieces, line up some tabs and start getting them settled in their spots. That one doesn't want to line up real well. There we go. You sometimes have to adjust them. So tacky glue, you know, it, it, uh, you do have to move it around. Okay, so now I have a nice big dome shaped piece. But we are not going to attach this one just yet. Okay? Um, we need to put our ribbon into our ball so that it has something to hang by. And I forgot something that I was going to tell you you needed, and um, I just used a paper clip. It really doesn't matter, but this ribbon is small and thin, and it's likely to just pull the knot right through my hole. So um, I, I wanted to I tied it to something that won't pull through my hole. So we're going to take out about oh, ten or twelve inches of ribbon. And I'm going to, um, I want to put my ribbon ends down through the hole. And if you, since you're watching, I thought maybe I might do that with a needle. I just stuffed it through there last time. Um, but. You have to put both both ends of your ribbon through this hole. You don't. Okay, so there we go. Okay, as you work with it, make sure you don't pull it all the way through the hole because that's, um, that could be a problem. Okay. And the, the little flanges or, or tabs on your triangles do kind of let you make a hole right there. So then I just put this around my paper clip and then I tied a knot. So let me do that again because you might not have seen what I just did. Um, I just put shoot, I put one end of the ribbon into the center of the paper clip. The paper clip is just something to keep it from pulling through the hole. So if you had a bead, a big bead or something like that that you could get your ribbon through, that would work just fine. Anything that you could tie it around. And then I'm going to tie this in a knot. Well, I thought I was going to. My fingers are just a tad sticky. And honestly, satin ribbon would have worked way better than this silk ribbon does, but it's what I had. And um, so it doesn't want to tie in a knot, so... We'll just fix that little problem by tying it this way. So you're just going to tie a nice knot around your paper clip. 
and then when you pull the top of it your paper clip will settle itself in there and it won't come through the hole if that makes sense let me try to hold it up there okay um, you can go back and tie this part in a knot too but I find no reason to um, okay so now we have our hanger and we need to put the bottom on our little Christmas ornament and so I'm going to put glue on all five tabs again and I'm going to pick up my little dome shaped piece yeah, I didn't line them up that was good and I'm going to line up each of the little tabs remember you might have to move them around just a little I usually have to go around it a couple of times to get them to line up sometimes I have to slide them around a little bit okay that one looks okay okay and there we go we have another Christmas ornament that is too stinking cute now I'm not I don't keep a lot of um, little Christmas decoration stuff um, but you could put stickers in the middle of each one if you had little Christmas stickers you could put um, little greenery things uh, little roses on it you could put a bead on each spot there are so many ways you could decorate these even further I happen to think they're really cute just like they are um, but there's there's tons of stuff you could do with them I just thought they were too stinking cute they are nothing new guys um, like I said this is not a new idea it is just something I thought of remembering things that I did as a kid the other day and I can't remember what even brought it on that made me think about it but uh, like I said we used to do this with our our Christmas ornaments our Christmas cards and I want to end this video by reading um, a creativity quote and we're going to read this one right here it says new experiences fuel creativity the more you seek out new experiences the more creative the more creative you are likely to become new experiences fuel creativity the more you seek out new experiences the more creative you are likely to become anyways guys have a wonderful afternoon make some art enjoy your families uh, giant hugs. Take care. Bye-bye. Hi everybody. I thought I'd stop back in real quick and show you what I decided I would try to do with these. We'll see how it goes. Um, I had some, or I found some little um, greenery type Christmas things and uh, I thought I'd deconstruct one a little bit and maybe use it for decorating this Ugh, come on now there we go um, well that would be I could probably stick those right through the hole <laughs> let's see I am just kind of sticking the wires down through the hole. We'll see what happens. And then I'll probably put some tacky glue underneath everything when I get it in place. There wasn't a lot of hole in this the ribbon is in it so there we go 
And then I think we'll that like that. Oops, it's caught in the ribbon, so. Now, if I had thought about that ahead of time, I might have, no, there we go. Now, how about that? Isn't that cute? Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift the whole mess up and put some tacky glue underneath it. So. Just kind of fill up this little hole with the tacky glue. Or what little bit of hole there is. There's really not much hole there. Okay. I don't want the berries to come out. They're they're going to be the the leaves will stick to it real well, but the berries likely will could come off. So we're just going to kind of stick all the berries sort of together. There. Now I'll need to leave it be. But the, I thought that made it just a little bit cuter. Um, I'll probably adjust these little leaves a little bit. There we go. So. There we go. How about that, guys? Okay, so I'm going to do the other one now. And I have uh, a couple more leaves. I thought this was way too big, but I think the little pine cone will be cute. And I... I don't know about that little wire thing, so I think I'm going to do the pine cone and the one berry I have left and the two leaves. I think that'll, that one's kind of coming apart, but that's okay. Ugh. Ugh, okay. These must have longer stems because they're not coming out real well. And this little leaf is um, picking up a little bit, so I'll have to make sure its greenery is glued to the wire when I stick it in. So. And again, I'm just going to find my hole and stick these in there. Trying to see if I can show you better. There we go. I don't want to glue it until I get everybody in there because otherwise if I run into trouble I might have, a, have glue stuck places I don't want to have glue. So. Like I said, that, that's the one that the little leaf that doesn't have. So we'll just stick it down. 
and then we'll push the berry down and then we'll bend this a little bit. I think we need to glue the pine cone in just a little more. Okay. I'm just holding it for a second, guys, just to try to get everybody to behave. There we go. And there's our little Christmas ornament. Isn't that cute? Just cute, 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 cute. Okay, guys, I'm going to run. Um, I hope you enjoyed this project, and thanks for watching. Bye-bye.